Welcome to Shaw, the Sound Healers Association, founded by Jonathan Goldman in 1982, bringing education and awareness of the use of sound and music for healing and transformation. Shaw features presentations by founding pioneers in the modern sound healing field, and we have a sound healing directory allowing you to list your work or find practitioners and teachers. There's a monthly online meeting, a blog, a fast resource of articles, and much more. Shaw, the Sound Healers Association, is dedicated to bringing harmony to the world of sound. Okay, here we go, and uh, we're jumping in now. And again, I'm Steve Farrell with Humanities Team. I'm here in Boulder, Colorado. I live near my dear friend, uh, Jonathan Goldman and his wife, Andy. And it's my pleasure to be here just to, just to introduce Jonathan and, uh, and Andy as this program starts. So, uh, and of course, this is a, a sound, a sad song, and it's a monthly program now that Humanities Team is really grateful to be producing each and every month with Jonathan and Andy. So thanks for being with us. I think you're going to have a fantastic time. Let me just uh, want to read a brief introduction here as we get started. So Jonathan and Andy Goldman are a powerful pair in the world of conscious living and sound healing. Jonathan is an internationally recognized authority, pioneer, and author in sound healing. Andy is a licensed psychotherapist who utilizes holistic treatment and sound healing. Both are highly respected leaders in the sound healing and spiritual music community. Andy and Jonathan have co-written two books together, Chakra Frequencies and The Humming Effect. And uh, again, I'll just share uh, when we came out a moment ago, Jonathan and I were, were sharing that sound healing is really taking off as it should because it is, as we're creating conscious living in the world, sound healing is, is a big role. Uh, it, it's an incredibly useful device and uh, you're looking at the man here, Jonathan Goldman, who got this whole thing started, was, he was called to it at an early age and hooray, uh, thank God he, he was, because uh, look where sound healing is today. And my pleasure, Jonathan, to uh, turn this over to you. Thank you, Steve. I am Jonathan Goldman. Oh, and I'm Andy Goldman. And Steve, thank you so much for that beautiful introduction. And also, we are so honored and, and grateful that we are here with Humanities Team and really appreciate that in a big way. So special thank you to you. And of course, Garth, who is that man behind the curtain who is always there with us. And of course, the Sound Healers Association is sponsoring our Sound Sat Songs. And I want to give a huge thank you to Nasiri Suzanne, who is our managing director, and also to Alex Sims, who is a major part of our Healing Sounds team. So thank you to all of you. And I want to just say welcome to everyone who is joining us tonight. We are honored to have you with us. And what I'd love to do is to share a little bit about what we're going to be doing tonight. And uh, we are going to, uh, our, our main topic tonight is compassion. We're going to delve deeply into the subject of compassion. We are, uh, Jonathan created some beautiful music called Music for the Heart chakra that midway through our presentation we're going to be listening to that uh, we have a global sound healing meditation that we do every month we'll be doing that and we will have time for questions so with that jonathan you know i think many people are back with us but there might be some people who are joining us for the first time and what is a sound sat song? What is a sound sat song? Thank you, Andy. Uh, great, uh, if you like, um, perspective of what we're doing tonight. And uh, I just like to say that once again, welcome everyone. Thank you, because uh, uh, this is a community. And guess what? The word satsang is basically a Sanskrit term 
which either means community or teaching or discourse or all of them. And if you like, this is a obviously a community that's based in sound and that allows me and Andy to share a little bit of knowledge and information with you. So uh, as Andy uh, said, this satsang is basically about compassion. Our first few uh, sound satsangs were based upon what we call the four pillars of sound healing. Everything is vibration, intention is powerful, we are all unique vibratory beings, silence is golden, and a lot more, and they all once again come together when we start dealing with more specific things such as compassion. So tonight with our sounds of compassion, we're going to be diving into what is, I think, a really, really important topic in this time of really this great dis divisiveness occurring mm -hmm. on this planet. And it's, I think that we really need to practice compassion. But the question is. Well, what is compassion? And when we were putting our program together, you know, we wanted to come up with a workable definition, a workable meaning. And of course, what we knew and what we obviously discovered is that compassion has many, many layers of, of, of meaning. And, and Jonathan, and I was remembering when we would do our healing sounds intensive every year, we did a 10 day training and each night we would do a, uh, a particular mantra and chant. And we always did uh, the Omane Padme Hum uh, mantra to the Avalokitesvara, who is the Buddhist deity of compassion. And I remember I would ask people to just take a moment and close their eyes and just go within. And what does compassion actually mean to you? And, and then I would say, just shout out a word that comes to mind. And I would hear words like understanding, forgiveness, loving kindness. Um, oh, goodness. Just so many non judge Non-judgmental, like being non-judgmental. So there... Just what does that mean to you, Jonathan? Well, I mean, it's just interesting that you mentioned that because so many people had such a variety, and that's uh, that's wonderful. Um, what does it mean to me? It means a whole lot of things to me. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess the bottom line is I'm going to refer to our beloved Tibetan chant master, Lama Tashi, who is oftentimes at our Healing Sounds Intensive for a brief amount of time. So we don't oftentimes take mm -hmm. part in not only about teaching about compassion, but also taking part in these chants for the Avalokite as far. And I was actually referring to, uh, he fairly recently did an online course called Tibetan Secrets of Happiness. And uh, I basically was referring to that just to see what, was Lama Tashi's, uh, you know, taking this whole thing because he's, if you like, a you know, a master of compassion besides mm -hmm. a master of chanting. Mm -hmm. And a plug in for the uh, Tibetan Secrets of Happiness. It's available on the Humanities Team uh, platform and also on Healing Sounds, and it's really worthwhile. So, compassion in the Tibetan language, the term is Ningje, Ningje. And it literally means the wish or desire for others, for all beings, to be released from suffering. Okay, so it's this, you know, if you like, wish or desire that all beings be in release from suffering. And this is, I think, very, very uh, wonderful as a thing. It, if you like, is different than being. Uh, totally self-absorbed in oneself and really gets more into encompassing others, which we think is very important. Andy? Oh, and I think I'd love to share the, the definition that I really relate to and that I hold dear. And I ran across it many years <clears throat> ago, and it is compassion is 
the passion that arises for the wish that all beings be free from suffering. Hmm. And that has always spoken to my heart. And so, you know, talking about what is compassion and coming up with the meaning, but why is compassion important? I'm going to just jump back for a second and hmm. suggest that we, uh, we deal, uh, as we were working with compassion, which is one of our favorite topics, but we, we, we were, you know, if you like doing some research on stuff, and I found out some stuff, including the Tibetan, uh, you know, word for uh, compassion. And um, I think on a level of all the different traditions, the Buddhist tradition may be the one that is most grounded in having compassion as being its really fundamental principle for survival and enlightenment we love that mm -hmm. but at the same time it's really inherent in so many different things whether you talk about christ consciousness or for example in the hindu tradition there's an uh, sanskrit term called advaita and advaita means non-duality or oneness so once again compassion is a global consciousness that is inherently found in every tradition. Mm. And that reminds me of uh, the humanities team does every year uh, their uh, global uh, oneness summit. Yeah. And we were able to do a panel with Lama Tashi on compassion and, and Chloe, Chloe Good Goodchild, Child, wonderful sound healer from yeah. uh, England yeah. yeah and so we compassion is is a very uh important near and dear to our heart topic and why is it important though yeah. Jonathan why is it and what I'm rem remembering when I think about well why is it so important there's a quote from the Dalai Lama and he says that love and compassion are necessities they are not luxuries. And without them, humanity cannot survive. So when I saw that quote, it was like, whoa, we better get our compassion <laughs> going here. Right. Yeah. Survival of humanity. I found another one yesterday that basically said something to the degree that when we lose our compassion, we lose our humanness. So mm -hmm. it's really, really important. Uh, so why or on a level if we can work with the energy of compassion then we understand that we are all one that we are all quantumly entangled if you like with each other and we are all one and if we're all one then we can literally come together and as our dear friend john lennon said in i am the walrus I am you as you are you as you are me, and we are all together. So, you know, ble blessed be to uh, John and all, uh, all of us who understand that we really need each other to survive because it's, uh, mm -hmm. it's paramount. Mm -hmm. And whether we're working with global oneness as a concept, or we did something recently, the uh, World Sound Healing Day, you know, just a few weeks ago, which was phenomenally important. And I just want to, you know, thank everyone who, you know, was able to partake in that. And yes, there were noticeable shifts in the uh, measurement of the vibratory uh, field of the planet. What a blessing that is. So uh, once again, if we can work with compassion and help relieve the suffering of others, I think we can really working together and creating a phenomena of one plus one equals three, we can work together and solve some of these great problems that seem to be facing us right now. But the question is, the question is, you know, hearing all of these wonderful attributes and qualities of compassion, but, you know, I'm then thinking, well, wait a minute, how do I cultivate within myself compassion? How do we generate compassion? How do we generate this desire for all beings to be free of suffering, etc.? And first and foremost, we must generate and develop self 
compassion. We must be able to look inside and begin to feel compassion for ourselves first and foremost. And how do we even begin to do that? And Jonathan, I know forgiveness is a huge piece in all of this. And if we can forgive ourselves and we can begin to love and feel our inner kindness, we can begin to then send out that compassion to others. And I, I totally agree, Andy. And I think that uh, another aspect of really cultivating compassion is beginning to get non-attachment uh, about certain things. And uh, because we've been practicing uh, we call it compassionate understanding, and it uh, has been really effective because the world is so divided right now that we've been attempting at least to look at both sides of uh, situations that are pointing fingers at each other. Everybody's pointing a finger at each other. I'm right, you're wrong. I'm right, you're wrong. And we go, okay, so why do these people believe that they're right? Can we at least understand where they're coming from? We may not agree with what they say, but we can agree with their right to say it because, you know, if half the people believe a certain thing, there's a reason they think this way and we have to honor that. And then you kind of lose the charge uh, that you may have had before of the anger. Oh, they're wrong, this and that. Go, oh, okay, I understand that. And it makes it so much easier to basically generate compassion to someone if you don't have a charge. Mm -hmm. you, what happens with the you know, divisiveness? Our buttons get pushed. We're angry. We're scared. And these are the two greatest, if you like, uh, negative emotions. And if we can work with compassion, we can begin to overcome that. Andy? Mm, well, a compassionate heart is accepting and forgiving of others and of ourselves. And I'm going back to that self-awareness of having the kindness towards ourselves, because that cultivating that gives us that ability to understand the other and to accept other people's mm. views because we can accept ourselves. So that's a, a big part of it. And there is an aspect of when you're working with uh, compassion that you really need to work with a little bit of a, of a mental, you know, it may be one of the highest emotional senses because it's one that is, if you like focused and crest through mental awareness, mental influence of, hey, I, you know, our, our first, if you like, instinct may be anger or fear, but if we can instead be you know, doing compassion, what an extraordinary mm -hmm. thing. Well, and in just a few moments, we are going to listen to a beautiful piece of music that Jonathan created called Music for the Heart Chakra. And when we do begin to listen to it, I would invite everyone to take this opportunity as we're listening to this music. There's beautiful visuals with it as well. By a wonderful, wonderful guy by the name of Timothy Helgeson, the really stunning, almost psychotropic visual. So you might want to catch that. But so while we're listening and watching the visuals, you know, to think about how you, how each one of us can generate more compassion and even thinking about one thing about yourself that you really love that can open up that door of compassion. So I think that uh, that as we are listening to this piece of music, I just invite people to just listen to their inner wisdom. And I will tell you, if you like, just a minute about it. Uh, the first, these are actually two pieces that have been combined together for the first time. And I had to do some sonic magic in order to combine them together. And the first part is from a piece that originally appeared in a uh, recording of mine called 
the lost chord. This is called Call of Compassion, and it's since become a, a favorite of people who listen to the Frequencies uh, album and also the uh, music for the Heart Chakra. And the next one is the Heart Sutra. And that was from Medicine Buddha, also found on um, the Frequencies and uh, and music for the heart chakra and i will say that of the heart sutra a lot of you are aware of uh, masuro emoto's work masuro emoto's work with uh, water crystals and in particular one that was so important to me was uh, the fujiwara dam a polluted dam in uh, japan that when he took a photograph of this water uh, froze it and then uh, filmed it through a dark field microscope it looked like mud and then he had a Buddhist priest chant over it for about 20 minutes, re-photographed it, and it looked like an incredible geometric crystalline structure like a snowflake. I thought, well, how much of our body is water? How much of our planet is water? So this uh, mantra, the Heart Sutra, is said to really bring healing and enlightenment to anyone who uh, listens to it. So we trust that this combination too with these visuals will really help assist you in basically being able to receive, uncover, and understand compassion. Mm, lovely. Shall we take it away, Garth?
Gosh. Mm. Wow. Mm. I hope you all found that as mind altering as I did. It was quite a uh, unique trip. Uh, great uh, visuals, great uh, sound and music. And the, the last voice that you were hearing was our dear, dear mentor, angelic being, Sarah Sarua Benson, who may have been the great embodiment of compassion on oh, the planet. So uh, yes, yes. I trust that uh, listening to that really helped us all move into a place of compassion. Mm. <sighs> oh, and I hope that, you know, just it stirred just a little bit inside of each one of us to begin to focus in our own lives on compassion. So anyway, anything else you want to say? Thank you for that music, Jonathan. That was, that, that was, was a like... very cool experience because, you know, uh, making it at home late at night and, you know, then watching and going, oh, that works. But then seeing it in the context of this, I was really pleased. So I trust that you all were too. And, uh, you know, blessed yeah. be. Yeah. Andy, it is time now for our energetic right. astrological assessment, my dear. What is going on in the universe these days? Well, there's a lot. Plenty. <laughs> there's a lot happening. And, and what I like to do is just to kind of give a bit of an overview. And, you know, speaking of compassion, which, uh, you know, we had many reasons for choosing this topic. Uh, but about three days ago, we did have a new moon in the sign of Pisces. And of course, we're now into the month of Pisces. And Pisces has uh, is very sensitive, very connected to uh, the divine, and can be such compassionate, compassionate energy with Pisces. So it seemed real appropriate to uh, have our talk on, on compassion. But I just want to also mention that, that uh, this month coming up, the month of March, is not only going to be the Pisces month where we're going to be tuned in more to compassion, hopefully. And, but there are two major, major things that are happening in this month of March that are going to be bringing about significant changes and a shift in energy. We are going to start feeling it very, very strongly coming up in March. We have two, we have the planet Pluto and the planet Saturn. Both of them are changing mm -hmm signs. Mm -hmm. Now, this is very significant because particularly for Pluto, because Pluto is the slowest moving of our planets. And in fact, it takes 248 years for it to go around the zodiac. So it has been in the sign of Capricorn since 2008. And Capricorn is all about structure and control and top-down authority, etc., it is in March moving out of that energy and into Aquarius, huh. which is much more about freedom, okay. much more about, you know, humanity. And so that is going to bring a real shift in the energy of our planet. Saturn is moving into the sign of Pisces. And they're moving into these new signs within two weeks of each other. Wow. So we're going to look for March being a very pivotal, powerful mm. month in 2023. And <laughs> it's, it's supposedly this month is going to be, well, just let's everybody buckle up. <laughs> <laughs> However, and stay it, compassionate. And stay compassionate. That's why, you know, doing our uh, talk on compassion is so right on for this particular time. And I do want to mention that uh, on the 1st of March, the planet Venus and Jupiter, the two most benefic energy carrying planets, 
are actually going to be conjunct on the 1st of March. So that should be bringing in a lot of blessings and positive energy. So we're going to have a very exciting month of March. And we also have the equinox, but we'll be back for more with the equinox next month. <laughs> But anyway, Jonathan, that's all that I really want to share uh, with the uh, brief astrological assessment. And I just psychically am sensing a whole lot of vibrational shifts occurring on a astrological level. Would that be correct? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, so once again, whenever these shifts occur, the more we can be in that state of oneness, the more we mm -hmm. can be in that state of compassion and we, we got yeah. coming up now our fabulous global guided own and and before we do that though i just want to mention one last thing astrologically because with that new moon which was just so recent it is a time to set intentions it's a time for new beginnings and so i would just invite the intentions of bringing in more compassion into our lives individually and collectively as a beautiful intention. And now, of course, we're going to uh, be having our global OM. With the intention of healing the planet, of projecting, uh, if you like, sound, light, and love to ease the suffering of all sentient beings, which is a real bodhisattva thing to do. So uh, how about it? And I just want to also suggest, so last month, in honor of World Sound Healing Day, we did the ah, uh, which is a heart-centered sound. Now we're doing the om, which we uh, have been doing for a while in most of these sound sat songs. And really, you know, depending upon uh, your tradition, that can be the sound of the heart center. And really what is most important is any of these sacred sounds can be sounds of com compassion, depending upon what our consciousness and our intentionality is. And this one particularly, um, if you don't know, uh, this, uh, Andy leads us in a heart brain coherence, meditation to begin, and then we sound forth with, I think there are about nine uh, ohms or whatnot, and then we're in silence. So it's broken up into three different things. But the heart brain coherence causes the heart and the brain to basically lock and synchrony, lock and step together. It amplifies our electromagnetic field and um, does all sorts of really good things. And then sound amplifies our electromagnetic field even more. And a lot of it is based on a number of different things, including deep breathing, mm -hmm. breathing through the heart mm -hmm. and gratitude. Well, when we are in coherence, when our heart and our brain are in coherence and that electromagnetic field is expanded, the way in which that happens is when we are holding intentions of positive vibrations, you might say, appreciation, gratitude, loving kindness, that's what puts us into that state of coherence and so we're going to be guiding you through this meditation and uh we want to thank the heart math people for the whole heart brain coherence um, a, uh research it's a it's a very good it's yeah. a very tool yeah. and if you have not done this before just follow the instructions in the guided meditation that Andy's going to be doing and this is coupled with some really powerful psychoacoustic sounds that uh you know are embedded over that and then we'll all sound together here's the thing don't just listen sound together and andy likes to say close your eyes well it's it's i i think closing our eyes helps us to really go within and then as we're guiding you through the heart brain coherence then we will reach that segment where we will be sounding forth the ohm and we invite and encourage everyone to wherever you are, whoever you're with, to out loud, use your own voice to sound along with us as well. And then we will be in silence. And then we'll be moment. in silence. And uh, also, I will say that if you happen to sneak a peek, you'll see a lovely image of the earth, mm -hmm. you know, spinning yes. on its axis. So that's also a good visualization uh, tool if you want to use that. So anything that makes you comfortable mm -hmm. and makes you feel more at ease. To project love and light through sound is a good thing. Mm. All right, Garth, we are ready, my friend.
The purpose for this meditation is to project a sound encoded with the energies of light and love and project healing to the Gaia matrix, our beloved planet Earth. We will first create coherence between our heart and our brain. This effect will further be amplified by the power of the OM that you will be toning along with later, bringing more light and love into your body, mind, and spirit for health and wellness. And now, begin to focus on your breathing. Breathing in and breathing out. Slowly, breathing in and out. And as you're breathing in and out, imagine or visualize that you're breathing in and out through your heart. As you're breathing in and out through the area of your heart, remembering that it is love that breathes each breath and it is love that causes each beat of our heart. Continue breathing slowly, breathing in and out in this manner. And now, I'd like you to call to mind something that has brought you a great deal of appreciation, gratitude, something that you are feeling very good about. This might be an experience with another person. Perhaps it's a beautiful sunset. It may be a beloved pet, a spouse. But it is something that has brought you loving kindness and gratitude and appreciation. And as you're breathing in and out through your heart, feeling this appreciation, feeling this gratitude, you're creating a beautiful coherence between your heart and your brain. And your heart, through this coherence, is expanding, getting larger and larger, and connecting with all the heart and loving energy on our planet in this moment. This is just a wonderful way of creating a very powerful heart activation and you'll be amplifying this with the sound of the OM. Continue breathing slowly and deeply while feeling appreciation and gratitude and imagining your breath going in and out through your heart. Now, visualize this energy and begin to sense a radiant light around you that is permeating every cell of your body and resonating your heart chakra. In a moment, we'll begin to gently sound forth with the power of the OM. And as you do this, visualize the planet Earth as a holographic image floating in front of you. Imagine bathing the Earth in a healing field of light and love that you are creating through your sacred sound. Now, let us begin to make the heart sound of the OM, bringing the energy of global harmonization, peace and healing to our beloved planet, Earth.
Now, being in silence, visualizing all the light and love through sound that you have manifested, resonating and bringing to earth and yourself to a deep state of healing. Welcome back, and I trust that uh, that may have been as amazing an experience for you as it was for me, because it was mm. very, very powerful. And I just mm -hmm. think that each time we do it, it's a little bit different, and our coherence becomes even greater in terms of sending this out. And just as a quick note, it just takes a small number of people, the high consciousness and the intention to really make a difference know that mm -hmm. yeah. I know I was quite powerful and, yeah. and I hope that perhaps during both of these meditation times that we've had tonight that there's just been a little part of yourself that you can go oh I feel that self-compassion feel that planetary healing we heal the planet we heal ourselves right. we heal yeah. ourselves we heal the planet okay yeah, so, Jonathan. Back my body, not yet. <laughs> oh, are we ready for our question for you? <laughs> okay. Okay, my dear. Okay. Well, we have been, of course, talking about compassion and the different layers and the different components of it. But, Jonathan, what, how can you, what's the difference in compassion and gratitude? Ah, what a, that's, that, that, that's a great question. That actually uh, was sent in, and we are grateful for that because they uh, found out we were going to be doing something on uh, compassion, and uh, it's a really good question. Uh, do I have an answer? Well, from my perspective, they are not the same, and in fact, they're quite different because on a level, gratitude, uh, I think, lays the way for compassion, but gratitude is, you know, us giving, being thankful for usually something in our life that is going good and going well, or something that we're appreciative of, of whether it's a pet or a spouse, or even a, I don't know, whatever it is, but it's something that you like, and that, you know, compassion calls for our being more expansive and sending love and light, not to ourselves, which is self-compassion, but out to the planet, out to all the beings on the planet, out to the universe, but out to others and causes us also to on a level be able to drop our judgment about others because if we're going to be generating compassion at all, then we can't have any uh, thought. You know, the, the whole discernment uh, phenomena uh, is really important as opposed to the divisiveness 
um, you know, phenomena, so we can discern that we are basically consciously going to be projecting the emotion of the wish for, if you like, all sentient beings to be released from suffering. That's a powerful thought form that comes from the heart and is then focused from the mind. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Well, you know, Jonathan, when I think about all that you said with compassion indeed, but when I think about gratitude, it's, it's almost like, you know, when I am really thankful and appreciative of something or someone or whatever, when I'm in that state, there is really no room for judgment or resentment. And so when I'm in gratitude, when I'm just very thankful, it's almost like that that gratitude can kind of lay the groundwork okay. of helping me then to, to be more compassionate. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And so that's sort of how I kind of differentiate. Yes. And between the two we love gratitude and we think it's mandatory obviously you know the mm -hmm. heartbreak coherence is about gratitude and appreciation i i think and this is just my perspective that compassion is a wee bit uh more um accomplished as a energetic form to manifest but also perhaps you know at least as important because i think to really create oneness and coherence and a state of being one that we need to really include everyone on this planet perhaps mm -hmm. on all this whole multiverse phenomena everyone together so that we can be as one and be as our quantum scientists tell us we are entangled we are together mm -hmm. and if we are together then we got to realize that what happens to one person do unto others mm. as you would have do unto mm. yourself, the golden rule. Oh, that's very lovely indeed. And, and you know, sometimes I think of, of, of gratitude almost as, you know, a, a little doorway into compassion because, you know, if, if I can think of when we talk about self-compassion and cultivating that, and if I can think of something about myself that I can say, hey, I really like that, and I can be appreciative of that, then that sort of opens that little, gives us a little leeway into self-compassion, and then more compassion can be sent out to yeah. our planet and, and we to each be, other. We all become saints, bodhisattvas or whatnot, as we use our love, our light, and our sound to make shifts and change. Mm -hmm. Okay, now on to the wrap-up. The wrap-up, <laughs> first of all, is thanking every yeah, one of yeah. you for being part of this phenomena and pleased to report that we uh, do post these in about a week on our YouTube uh, site, and I know Humanities team also posts them, so they, uh, uh, they're they available because there's some pretty good teachings and some pretty good experiences yeah. that you can relive again mm. and also uh want to um invite people to our next with uh sound satsang which is going to be on the actual spring equinox monday march 20th at 7 p.m mountain time come join us it's going to be real special mm. and a huge thank you too and you know between now and then if everyone is you know guided to learn more about the sound healers association do visit soundhealersassociation.org and nasiri would be delighted to answer any of your questions you may uh, it's a great place to network with people of other, you know, sound healers and other people that are working with and sound. And great archival master classes and yeah. all this other stuff. Worthwhile investigating. So please yeah. go. Yeah. Finally, I want to thank again, Garth, thank you, sir. Yes. Steve and Humanities team, the series and Sound Healers Association, Alec and Healing Sounds, and all of you uh, for this wonderful sound 
satsang that we've co-created together. We give thanks. We give thanks and we heal the planet. We heal ourselves. We heal ourselves. And we heal the planet. So we have a choice and may we all just be filled with compassion tonight. Bye-bye Many blessings.